Hi there and welcome to this video. I hope you're all well and surviving these challenging times. Now, whilst many of us have been out of the strict COVID lockdown um, for a while, here in the UK, the list of countries where you're required to quarantine because of um, spikes in the coronavirus um, instances is a rapidly changing um, list and we've seen um, countries like Croatia go on the list, Portugal come off the list and it's changing on a weekly basis which means that sadly whilst we're out of strict lockdown um, we still have to take a lot of precautions and it's going to be a while before we can really travel again. So I've been taking this opportunity um, to look back through my portfolio and you know this is one of the benefits of um, you know, doing photography, videography, is you've got, you know, an image library that you can look back and bring some memories forward. Images are great for that. And I've been going back looking at some of my favourite locations, some of the images I've got there, and it, you know, evokes a real emotion and brings back some really great memories. Probably the location I've travelled to most um, is Rome in Italy. And that was mainly on business over 25 years. I've been there probably in excess of 100 times, but also on pleasure. And normally when I'm on business, I don't tend to take a camera with me. But when I'm on pleasure, you know, we'll walk around. It's a great walking city. You know, I liken it to an immersive living museum um, because, you know, the architecture, the history, the character is like nowhere else in a lot of ways. You've also got a really great climate in the summer. It can be a bit oppressively hot, but it's really sunny, so you get some really great light. If you pick the right times of day, you can get some great sunrises and sunsets. And of course, the food and the drink is great there as well. And that married with um, a great culture, great people, makes for a really good place to go. And of course, from London, it's only about three hours each way on the plane. So it's quite easy to get there for a long weekend um, if you can't make any more time there. But if you can spend a week there, there is plenty to do. Um, so let's look at um, some of the places that I think are really great for photographers. And most of the images we're going to look at are from my most recent trip, which was back in the summer of 2018. So whilst Rome has many iconic locations, there are some to go to and some not to go to. I'm only going to focus on a small number of um, photographer friendly type of locations in um, this video. So I'm not going to focus on the Trevi Fountain or the Spanish Steps because um, from my experience, it, even if you go out of hours, those are really crowded spaces. And actually the Trevi Fountain with the numbers of tourists that I've seen there represents a bit of a security risk for your, for your camera gear. And it's very difficult to get a, a meaningful photo there. So we'll avoid those ones in this video. But one that is worth going to is the Colosseum. Um, it's an iconic location. And the best way to go there is really, we found on an organized tour. Because otherwise you've got to queue up um, in lines for many hours, often in very hot conditions. Um, and what you'll see is if you search online, there are lots of companies offering tours. And these can be from 80 euros upwards per person. Um, so they're quite expensive. Um, but actually you can go direct to the Colosseum and go to the official ticketing office. Um, you can look at it in Italian and in English and they have various options and they're released at various points in time in advance of the dates um, that you're going. It is worth checking because obviously with um, COVID, I think some of the, the tours have changed at the moment. I'll put a link up above for the site um, and you can buy tickets that cover the Colosseum, the Forum and the Palatine Hill. Uh, they were about 16 euros, um, but we did a tour that was really good and I'd definitely recommend. And that was going up to the Belvedere level and that is right up at the very top of the Colosseum. And you can not only look down on the Colosseum, and this shot here is a stitch together of a number of different shots, but you can look outside the Colosseum, you can see how it sits within the overall sort of Rome um, 
city position. And if you organize to go on one of these tours, you can choose an Italian or a, an English guide. Um, you, so we had an archaeologist who really knew her stuff. It was very educational, very entertaining. Um, and you also avoid the long lines because you get a timed slot to go on your tour. I think from memory, our Belvedere level tour was about 23 euros each, and that included entry to the Colosseum in general and going up to the Belvedere levels. The Belvedere levels have only been opened in um, the last couple of years after being closed for about 40 years. So, and the only way to really do that was through the, the, the official tour. So very worth, uh, well worth a trip to the Colosseum, um, but do pick your time. So we went early in the morning when it wasn't too hot because we were there in August. Um, and you can get some really good shots because there are only about um, 10, 15 of us in the party going up to that level. And therefore, you're not in with all of the crowds. So do pre-plan, do think about it, do check um, in advance and see what you can achieve. So while you're at the Colosseum, it's also worth um, buying the combined ticket and going into the Forum, which is the archaeological site that is around the Colosseum. Um, and there you can get really down and immersed into the um, remaining architecture from the Roman times. You can walk amongst the different um, buildings. You can look at some of the signage, giving you an ex explanation of what the buildings were. Equally, you can go up onto the Palatine Hill and you can look back down onto the ruins and get a feel for how it all um, sat in, in the Roman times. Um, it's definitely worth spending a few hours there just wandering around because you can get a lot of different images is either close-ups or the more panoramic ones like this one. Um, so again, real small additional cost on the Colosseum um, ticket and worth doing because it's right ne next door to the Colosseum. Now the opposite end of the forum from the Colosseum is this building which is the um, Monumento a Vittorio Emmanuel II or sometimes you'll hear it called Mussolini's typewriter. It's an iconic building. You see it from a lot of different locations in Rome because it is one of the tallest buildings there. So it does peek out over the top of the other um, buildings. And you can walk up the steps and go inside and have a look around. It's a museum. Um, equally, if you find your way up to the, the base of the top part of the um, building and you go round the right hand side to the back of the building there is actually a lift which you can pay five euros each and go up to the roof terrace. Being one of the highest buildings in Rome it does afford a great panoramic view 360 degrees around it across um, Rome. Quite often because it's quite difficult to find round the back there isn't too much of a queue um, it's quite a fast lift up to the top and it's the only way to get there. Um, and for five euros it is one of the best vistas across the Rome skyline. So again, really worth the time, really worth planning and, and doing it. Perhaps at the same time you go into the Colosseum and the Forum. It's all in that same area. The, this image is um, one that I took and you have to think about um, some of the challenges you'll face um, in a busy city like Rome. This is an image, I took about 20 images from the same spot and then used Photoshop to bring them together. And in doing that, you can use a technique which removes all of the people, all of the things that are moving between the images, just to leave the elements that are fixed there. So I've managed to get an image here where all of the people have been pretty much removed. So again, you know, thinking about Rome, thinking about big cities, think about some different techniques that you can use to get those different images or iconic images, even though there are lots of people around. So this next photo is of the Pantheon. It's not far away from um, the the uh, Mussolini's typewriter. Uh, originally it was a Roman temple, but now it's a Catholic church. It's a domed building, um, it's free to go in, and it has a big central opening at the top of the dome, an oculus. Uh, the dome is the largest unreinforced concrete dome um, in the world, and the height to the oculus is the same as the diameter at 43 meters. Now the challenge you've got here is it's a really nice building, it's really well preserved, um, but it's quite dark inside and obviously looking through the oculus it's pretty bright outside. So you will need to think about bracketing 
Um, there were a few people there when we, we were there, so you, you've got to think about what lens are you going to take? Are you going to take an ultra wide angle lens or are you going to um, crop in somehow? And this image I, I bracketed to ensure I got the clouds and the sky, but also the interior. Um, because it is a very beautiful building. There's lots of intricate design you can you can take photos of. And it's some of these lesser buildings that are perhaps a little bit quieter, but they're equally special. Um, when I was there, I was reading how the Oculus is perhaps a, an early calculator or a calculator of time and a calendar. Um, and where the light falls through the Oculus indicates where what time of the day it is and what time of year it is um, so you can learn a lot about the buildings a lot about the history and get some great photos while you're doing it this next location is the Vatican um, technically it's a separate country another country um, so um, it's it's not technically in Rome um, however it is in the center of Rome um, I have been into St Peter's Basilica um, which you see in this picture. However, it is really quite difficult to get into many, uh, many times in the year now. There are quite long queues and you probably need an organised tour to be able to get in there um, if you don't plan in advance. But even outside, you know, the architecture, the enormity of the uh, piazza there is, is really good. And you can get some great pano um, shots there. This was stitched together, I think, with about four or five shots. As you can see, the lady with the blue dress in the centre actually appears three, possibly four or five times in the image. And as with all large cities, actually trying to either time to trying to dial out people is is almost impossible. And sometimes you've got to make people part of the image and therefore you know, trying to work with the situation you have, you find yourself in, as in this image. Finally, Rome is a great street photography um, location. There is never a dull moment. There's always something going on. This, you know, Vespa, traditional Italian Vespa with the um, traditional historic architecture behind. Equally, don't forget the food, whether it's porchetta, pizza, pasta, all the pastries there. Some great opportunities to really get some really nice images and detail images of your experiences in um, Rome to create a story perhaps of images for when you get back rather than just a, a bunch of individual images. So I find there's lots to do in Rome, no matter how many times you go, there's always something different to see and I really like it. Um, this is, I hope you've found this real quick insights, just a, f a few little places that I've been that I think are worth visiting um, when you go there really useful. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. I hope um, it's given you some ideas and perhaps some memories if you've been to Rome. If you have been to Rome, you know, but where are your favourite locations for photography? Drop them in the comments below. It'd be great to get a bit of dialogue going to understand where you think are some great locations. What makes them a bit different? Are they great at sunrise, sunset? Is it about street photography? Um, or is it about the location itself? Let us know, as I say in the comments below. It'd be great to hear. As always, if you enjoyed the video, do hit subscribe, do hit the notification bell to be notified of future videos, and I look forward to seeing you on a future video.